It's Daddy in the garage again. In this video, I'm going to try something a bit different. I'm going to make this enclosed bowl and use some colour along with Milliput. Stay tuned to see how I did it. Remember to look after yourselves, folks, when you're doing your wood turning. I'll start off um, with a sycamore blank. This is quite a deep blank. Um, and here I'm just I'm using my new Carter and Son uh, bowl gouge to shape it, doing push cuts and pull cuts and a bit of shear scraping, just getting it to the shape, basic shape I want and getting it to round. Because it, uh, it had quite a wobble on it just to begin with. It wasn't, it was a bit out of true. But uh, soon got it to round. The gouge is performing nicely. Handle feels nice. And just working my way round, like I say, a few push cuts, a few pull cuts, and a bit of shear scraping. Doing a couple of little finishing cuts here. You can see a nice smooth cut I'm getting on that. But, uh, switching to my Robert Sorby heavy or extra heavy duty square nose scraper at this point and just removing any ridges and uh, getting a really nice round profile to it. Marking out the uh, base for the mortise using Robert Sorby parting tool and a skew. Bit of sanding just then, get rid of any tool marks. Now using a parting tool to create a recess defining my pattern. Drawn in the pattern. I've taken the uh, bowl off the lathe and I'm mounting it on the Simon Hope carving um, jig. Just positioning it to the right angle. Just makes it a bit more comfortable for doing the next bit. Using my Dremel. Carving in the pattern. Using a ball ended burr to start with. Just going over the whole pattern. Carving out a channel the same depth as the recess I've cut. This is going to take the milliput inlay later. And now, now I'm switching to a cylindrical burr. I'm just defining the pattern a bit better, widening the channel, getting nice parallel sides. Now you can see the finished pattern all carved into the wood. Black milliput. If you haven't seen uh, my videos before, milliput is a two part epoxy putty. Fantastic stuff, very versatile, and you have to mix equal quantities. I'm using just over a, a whole packet for this project. And I'll start by mixing one packet. You can gauge how much you need by how far the first packet goes. But uh, mixing equal parts A and B together, I start by kneading it, and once I've got it got it to this stage I start my roll and fold technique where I roll it and then fold the ends into the middle and roll it and fold the ends into the middle and roll it and fold the ends into the middle do this for about five minutes and it'll end up very nicely mixed mix it really thoroughly no streaks left or anything like that and I've rolled it into little worms and I'm now squidging those into the recesses I've created this took a bit of time but the recesses are relatively wide so uh, it wasn't as bad as some of the patterns I do. I'm just squidging that in, making sure I don't leave any voids. They are all done and it's all slightly proud of the surface. Leave it overnight. It sets after four or five hours, but if you leave it overnight, it gets really hard. Then we're back into the workshop. Square nose scraper. And I'm just cutting back the milliput now to um, get it flush with the wood. This is one of my favourite bits really, it's quite exciting seeing the pattern emerge. Very messy, make sure you're wearing a respirator. But, uh, yeah, just rocking backwards and forwards, getting it down to the wood. And then you should reach a point like this and you're ready for sanding. Use a circular sander, this is the uh, Hope Pro sander. That, and there we're we'll getting the colours out. These are um, Chestnut Product Spirit Stains. L little Q-tips make great mini disposable paint brushes, very cheap and they do the job very nicely. I start by adding some blue and I do all the blue, the blue bits I want done blue to start with. 
I need a sort of two or three coats on each one. Then I'll switch into yellow. I'll do all the yellow bits. Just take your time. Doesn't matter if it overlaps the milliput slightly because it doesn't show the milliput's black and you're going to buff a lot of it away. A bit of red. And I also used orange and green in this project until I'd coloured in all the uh, all the little shapes. There we go. All done. And then I'm using cellulose sanding sealer. I'm using the aerosol uh, variety on the advice of Terry from Chestnut Products because if you use the one you rub on you're likely to smear the colours. By using the aerosol it keeps all the colours distinct. There you can see it. And that's the sanding sealer I use. The, the aerosol in the middle and there's the standard one and the thinners to go with it. I'm denibbing with some 800 grit and then I want some Yorkshire grit. It's one of my favourite bits. Put a generous amount on and then you buff it and buff it and it gets finer and finer. And then you buff it all the way. It leaves a gorgeous finish. And uh, I just finished off with um, some microcrystalline wax on the top of that and buffed it. But it really came out beautifully. Nice bit of chatoyancy on the wood. Removing the faceplate, putting my Patriot chuck on, putting the bowl back on using the recess I'd created, just defining the opening of the bowl with a parting tool, and then I'm got my carter and some bowl gouge again. Just doing a bit of hollowing. Taking my time, doing nice push cuts. It's just beginning to lose its edge a bit now. You can see by the uh, shavings getting a bit fine there. So I'm switched over to my Robert Sorby, my trusty Robert Sorby bowl gouge. And this has got quite a steep grind on it uh, and a traditional grind on this one. And this is great for going along the base of these uh, these deeper bowls and for getting in these angles and the curve at the bottom of the bowl there. Works very well for that. And you can see the nice shavings coming off here. Yeah. Still going. Take me time. Getting some nice cuts going there. Just taking it bit by bit. And I do check the depth periodically. I've switched over here to the Carter and Son um, bowl scraper. This is a heavy duty bowl scraper and this is working very well. And I'm just refining the shape and deepening the undercut a little bit and just deepening the uh, recess. And then I switch switch to my uh, Robert Sorby negative rake one. Bit of power sanding, sanding sealer, bit of sanding, bit more sanding sealer and then Yorkshire grit at time again. So I work the Yorkshire grit, got the inside nice. Over to me Sorby Longworth style chuck, using it in expansion because it's an enclosed bowl. I'm expanding the pegs into the recess, just snugging up the pegs at this point. And then we tighten them in sequence going opposite sides each time three turns. So you do it in an actual sequence working opposites three turns on each one and that gets it nice and snug mount that onto the Patriot chuck bring up the tail stock with my new uh, step center just to provide a bit of support and then uh, got one of my um, Sorby bowl gouges out just doing a couple of push cuts and a couple of pull cuts just to get rid of that recess on the bottom makes it look a bit nicer a bit more professional just gentle cuts we're only at 600 rpm because we're on the long with style chuck and just taking it taking my time nice gentle cuts negative rake scraper again my robert sorby and just running gently across the bottom removing any torn grain and a bit of power sanding getting that quite a fine finish on that 
dusting, you know, getting rid of any surface dust. Putting my brand in the middle, or as near the middle as I can get it. And uh, I've done a bit of pyrography on this. A bit of light sanding afterwards. There we go. Here is the finished bowl. Something new. Not something I've tried before, but a combination of uh, milliput and chestnut spirit stains. Chestnut product spirit stains. And the uh, milliput forms a hard border between the colours and stops them running and spreading so you get these nice bold colours. And uh, the cellulose sanding uh, sealer in spray form worked brilliantly. No cut running of colours and uh, and it gave a really good consistent finish. Got a lovely shine on that. I'm very pleased with that. This is, uh, I've made this as a, a wedding present. Um, my uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law are off to a wedding tomorrow. So, of Catherine and David, so they're taking this bowl. Uh, yeah, enclosed bowl in sycamore with milliput and chestnut products, spirit stains. Very, very pleased with how that's come out. Loads of possibilities there, creative possibilities. And it's a bit different to a lot of the coloured pieces. Gives quite a good illusion, really. Um, what you probably can't see in the video is the chatoyancy that you get with the pieces. Um, but they look like they're all individual wooden pieces that have been set into the black instead of all coming from the one blank you know, that they're all part of the blank. You can see the grain, but they actually look like individual pieces. Almost like rock. But very, very pleased. Um, yeah, I enjoyed using the uh, Carter & Sons tools, um, but my uh, Pro Edge won't get the right um, grind angle on the gouge, so I'm gonna have to look at re-grinding that, um, or getting a, a second um, sharpening machine but I don't really want to do that, I like my Pro Edge, um, it's fantastic so I'll probably put a different grind on that because I, when I went to hollow the bowl it was getting blunt and uh, I went to resharpen it but I couldn't copy the grind on it at all so I will re-grind it to a, a grind I'm more used to um, but uh, yeah it's all gone very nicely um, and I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you very much everyone for watching and a massive thank you to all my subscribers. I really appreciate it. Almost 10,000 now. I'm absolutely blown away by that. But uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much to all my old and all my new subscribers. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe. It costs nothing and it helps me out. Uh, yeah, please like, share and subscribe. It all helps. A um, couple of things, uh, as I mentioned I've got a couple of demos at Woodworking Live coming up and that's um, Woodworking Live run by Record Power and that's going to be at the DNM Tool Show at Kempton Park Racecourse on the uh, 7th and 8th of um, October, in fact it's the 6th, 7th and 8th, I would only be there on the 7th and 8th. Uh, and I'm going up there with Nick Zamet and he's going to be uh, doing something up there as well but look forward to seeing you all there and next year we've got Makers Central so if you know anyone who makes anyone you'd like to see there tell them to look at the website the more the merrier it's going to be awesome we've got so many people going anyway I look forward to seeing you all soon and I'll be back more with some more ideas like this
I went to the uh, Yandel show, the Yandel's woodworking show at the weekend with Nick Zamet and uh, I went to one of my favourite tool stands, the Robert Sorby stand and bought a couple of things. Um, I bought two of these tool rolls uh, for transporting my tools to my demos that I've got coming up. Um, and these are lovely, they're beautiful quality, made in England and they're leather, nice logo on there. And I'm going to try and do the same with my brand and put my Jimson Stuff brand on there, just so it shows they're mine. And uh, the other thing I got from Robert Sorby was one of these uh, revolving step centres. I've got the smaller one, but this is the big one. And uh, it's when I reverse bowls round um, when I'm turning off the base it just spreads the load out a bit less chance of splitting the uh, bottom of the bowl but that's a lovely quality thing that is lovely here I am burning my logo onto my new tool roll that worked very well good old milliput and my Yorkshire grip and don't forget woodworking live done by record power at the DNM Tool Show, Kempton Park, 6th, 7th and 8th of October. Be great to see you there. Come and say hello. I'll be there with Nick Zamet. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to check out the Makers Central website. I'll put lots of links to various things in the description of the video. Daddy's talking to himself again. <laughs>